Welcome back, Agron fans! This is the second round, or rather, the second match of round one of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament. This is going to be a match between Electro and J Raccoon. Let's just review what's happened so far. So, last game we saw a very riveting series between Vermind and Haiku, where Haiku won 2 to 1 using proxies the entire way. Though in the last match, Vermind did an excellent job trying to defend and really showed how defense can be done. And now we're moving on to J Raccoon versus Electro. I'm very interested to see how this plays out. I've seen Jericho play quite a lot. He's a pretty competent Grecum player. Does a... I'm trying to remember his style offhand. Anyway, Electro, however, I've not seen really play in a very long time. I never really saw him play much anyway. He doesn't tend to play a lot, or at least I haven't seen a lot of his matches. So it'll be very interesting to see what he's up to. Not sure if Jericho knows what to expect either, but we will find out very shortly. So we shall begin! First match is going to be on Cataclysm Ridge. Jericoon is in the northeast corner of the map, Electro is in the southwest corner of the map. And Jericoon going for Grekum as expected. Electro is... I'm expecting CISO, but we'll see. I'm actually not sure. He might be the random player. No, Vekir! Okay, he's going for Vekir. And... Neither player's relation with up to. So, yeah, Electro, I've... I'm curious what he's going to do. See, the thing with Electro is I actually see him play too much. I've seen him do a lot of modding work and a lot of work with various stuff to do with languages, with a rescript replacement, and a lot of other back-end things like that. But I haven't really seen him play a whole lot, so I'm curious to see what he's up to, what he has in mind. And j on the other hand, is probably going to go for... Fairly standard Grekum setup. Probably gonna, he is getting an early Octopod with the RP out and the Q Plasma. Probably going to go for a fairly safe opening, some econo economic build up to air units, and then from there probably a few Farpods, Epipods, and I think he's fairly fond of Chrono Porting, but I don't remember offhand exactly. Which is kind of sad, actually. <laughs> I really should know this stuff offhand. It's just that the Grekum style is kind of... A little bit homo well, it's not entirely homogenous. I mean, Aragon's done a lot of we weird and wacky things with Grekum, but I think J Raccoon is one of the bigger, I guess you could say, practitioners of something of the typical Grekum metagame style. So I expect him to go fairly quickly for Aragon, it's very quickly for Chronoporting, and then basically Chronoport around Farabods and Sepipods, and possibly Octopods. In fact, a large number of Octopods would not surprise me. And Electro, on the other hand, going for a fairly safe economic opening. Very quick resource processor on Q-Plasma. He is not going for as much Liquid Crystal early on. However, Cataclysm Ridge is a small map. So getting early Q-Plasma for presumably an early depot and thus early vehicles is not a bad idea. It's not unlikely that a rush will happen. I don't see Jericoon building up Octos. He apparently is just building up either for economy or for... Actually... No, hard to say. He's not turning this auto into either a resource processor or a progenerating member of the Triad. So, it looks like he might be doing a patrol defense. Might very well be going for an attack. There is an Octo going around the south side that looks to be going for a bit of a harassment attack. And it is being joined by its companions, Octo and Octopod. So, Jericoon going for a very early aggressive opener, while Electro is going for... Just a scouting route, but he is going largely for an economic opener. However, it's... The thing is that... Vekir... All they need to do is build about one or two Zion Veers on top of the one they start with, and a foundation. And they can hold off a decent number of Octos and Octopods. Now that... The thing is, Electro was going for an early depot already, and that's a pretty good defense against this. Especially if you have... Well, okay, it's a decent defense. Okay, Zion Pulsar against Octopod is tricky to pull off, but... With Foundation support, Zion Veer versus Octo goes in favor of the Zion Veer every time. So, Electro is actually taking a big risk by building this depot early. He might want to... Well, actually, he doesn't have the resources to build another Foundation, unfortunately. And it looks like J Raccoon is not waiting for these forces to meet up. He's going for the Octo first. He's continuing to go for the Octo first. J Raccoon, however, is much further in the past. But nope, the Octo is continuing to go in directly as it was... But no, it is not! It is moving back to base! Is it meeting up with its companions and attacking in one big group? No, it is going for a resource processor! It looks like Jericoon is not actually deciding to go for the aggressive build, or at least not using that Octo to do it. Probably gonna just let Electro worry and expect that 
a harassment force will be coming in and then build that depot early and end up wasting money on it. Well, that will be... I mean, it certainly doesn't have this RP here on Q-Plasma. That is a big difference. So Electro, at this point, does not have enough Q-Plasma to actually make vehicles from the early foundation or the early depot that he was planning on building. Jericoon, going for economy bills? That was entirely a mind game. Or at least it would appear to be. Jericoon does not... No, he's not set up for a rush at this point. He's He is going straight for economy. Still, pretty clever mind games on Electro there. So Electro ultimately does manage to get a depot, moving one of his RPs over to Liquid Crystal, sorry, over from Liquid Crystal to Q Plasma in order to actually start building vehicles properly. Now Jerrican, on the other hand, is building Q Plasma resource processors directly. He doesn't, oh, there's his Octopod, okay. So he does have an Octopod, he can defend against the Zion Pulse that comes in, he can defend against this Shinvir Tethvir pair that comes in, and now Electro, fully aware of what Jerrican is up to, will probably be a little bit more economically oriented himself, I'd imagine, at this point. Because Jericoon is not entirely penetrable for one or two Zion Pulsers. And Electro, however, is... Well, getting more Zion Veer. This was actually an old order for building. Let's see if he goes for another resource processor. Or if he goes for another Zion Pulser with this Zion Veer here. However, he has jumped back about 30 seconds, so it's going to be a bit difficult to check. And an Octo over to the north looks like Electro trying to make sure that Jericho can't get that far. And, wow, Jericho actually... Sorry, Jericho can make sure Electro can get that far. And Electro doing a bit of a number on Jericho's Octo, which is probably why this Octo is trying to do what it can to get rid of the Teth Veer beforehand. And that Teth Veer is going down. It cannot fight ground effectively at all, unfortunately. So it's not going to be able to do too much. But yeah, Electro, is he going for additional Zion Pulsers or is he going for additional resource processors? I think that it's going to be, well, probably Breezer's Processor is sort of kind of the safest option, but it is a Zion Pulsar. He is, in fact, going for a Zion Pulsar. He could still build a Resource Processor, however. He might go for another Zion Veer. He might turn this into another, yet another Zion Pulsar. Given the proximity of the Unplayable Past, I'm almost guessing he's just going to go for an attack right here. I mean, two... Oh, another Octopod coming up, however. That is a second Octopod. That's going to be much harder to deal with, especially without Skip Teleport. And there it is! There's a third Zion Pulsar! And another Zion Veer being built, so Electro is going for a very aggressive strategy, completely switching up from the first minute of the game. Now, Jericho's going economic, or partially economic. He's definitely defensive about it. He's still sending... Actually, looks like he's just going for a more powerful rush, or more powerful attack strategy. Not even a rush, it's more of an assault strategy. And Electro is set up to defend against this. He might be saving up for Skip Teleport. Okay, he does, and he's well aware of this. Jericoon has hit early enough with this Zion Pulsar that Electro is well aware of what will be going on. Getting another Zion Veer, probably for another Zion Pulsar, possibly for switch to a, an economy, but I doubt he's going to go that hard for economy. Let's see here. He does not yet have the resources to get Skip Teleport, but he's close. One more pull of Q-Plasma, and there it is. Skip Teleport being upgraded for one of them, or two of them, rather. The third one did not have enough... Actually, it looked like he didn't have enough, Q, enough Chrono Energy in time. And there's an Octopod over here. This Octopod is in a very opportune position to actually deal a lot of damage to Jericoon's... Sorry, to Electro's base. And Jericoon, he is actually dealing that damage. Electro is well aware of what's going on. And Electro will have skipped Teleport in time to deal with that. So that Octopod is... That Octopod is done for. Like, Jericoon can't really save it. But Jericoon is not just going for the one Octopod. He has actually quite a bit going on for Octopods. He has the Octopod over in his base. He has another Octopod that is going over the south side. He has the Octopod going over the north. Actually, the Octopod going to the north has not decided to go for that. So Electro, at this point, has three teleport-capable Zion Pulsers. And he's up against a scattered defense and not a whole lot in the main base. If Electro attacks right now, I could see that winning the game. A fourth Zion Pulsar! And probably skip capability will be on that too, pretty soon. So as I was saying, I think Electro is... Probably going to go for an assault right now. If he does that, this close to the unplayable past. There it is! There he goes! The Zion Pulsers are moving in for the kill, and they. I'm pretty sure we'll get it. However, this one Zion Pulsar got a bit. Oh, it got a bit distracted, unfortunately. But Jericho does have a chance to defend against this. He can build up to defend against this, and it looks like Electro. Unfortunately, this head Zion Pulsar got a bit distracted, giving Jericho that much of a chance. 
The Oshbod will be taking enough damage to die before it poses any real threat. So at least that is going down for Electro. I think Electro has this... Well, okay, it really comes down to how well Jericho can defend and can pull back. And Jericho might just be going for a straight-up attack while Electro goes for his. Trying to get for a bit of a base trade. This is kind of risky since Electro can just jump back and help defend. And the Zion Pulsar is also defending, and Electro has enough resources to continue building Zion Pulsars while he has the Zion Pulsars attacking Jericoon's base. So I think Jericoon has lost game one. I think Electro has this. is so close to the unplayable pass that this is basically certain. So. We'll see how that pans out, but I think this is going to be it. Actually, Jericoon has no way of rebuilding. He's lost all of his rebuilding options in the unplayable past. His only hope is to tear apart Electro's forces with these three Octopods. Getting rid of the Zion Pulsar. The Zion Pulsar got skipped teleport at the worst possible time. But another Zion Pulsar behind it to help defend. And at this point, clever strategy here. He needs to move this Arcticus out. Or, well, bad it, it would be a bad idea to move this Arcticus out of the way. The Arcticus is an option to rebuild. You can use that to build up more Faros and Seppies and continue to rebuild. At this point, however, his main assets are these Octopods. And they're doing a pretty good job. They're actually getting into a good position to start dealing with the Depot. And another Zion Pulsar is coming out, but three Octopods versus one Zion Pulsar wins for the Octopods. So, the biggest threat Jericho has is Electro moving back his Zion Pulsars from the main base assault to defend, get rid of the Octopods, and then finish him off. Another Zion Pulsar has been built up, and that actually is not being attacked directly. The Depot is tanking all the damage. The Zion Pulsar is not taking any of it. Jericho jumped back to this point in time, however, he is switching targets to the Zion Pulsar. However, one of his Octopus is taking a lot of damage in the process. And another Zion Pulsar moving back. However, this is just one Zion Pulsar that is moving back. And it looks like he was planning on Depot healing. Electro checking his point of view. He's about 10 seconds down from there, losing his Depot and building yet another foundation. Not sure the Zion Pulsar is going to go if he's going to move it back to deal with his last Octopod. Because Zion Pulsar in this main base here is not doing a whole lot. It can continue to attack these RPs, and it looks like that is exactly what it is doing. J Raccoon losing more RPs while. He's also getting rid of Electros. And Electro has this foundation up here. He doesn't have a whole lot of Chrono Energy. He has no orders worth of Chrono Energy right now. With his last order, he is going for another foundation. So this Zion Pulsar has a bit of a chance to deal with the Octopods. Positioned correctly, it could deal with the Octopods. It'd be tricky, though. Definitely would be a tight situation. And Electro is going for it. He's moving his Zion Pulsar into position to deal with the Octopods here. Praying that the foundations will support him long enough. And it looks like the Octopods are distracted enough that it actually is plausible. Yeah, this Zion Pulsar isn't taking enough damage for it to be a big threat. And with the third foundation, that guarantees it. This Octopod is going down. However, Electro has lost a lot of resources in the meantime. He has one resource processor left. It is still in the main base. It hasn't teleported away or anything. So it is still under threat by the Octopods. And this Zion Pulsar is recovering health quite well from the foundations. Able to get rid of this Octopod, and once it gets rid of the Octopod, it is alive. It will get rid of this last Octopod. J Raccoon has lost the Octopod, but he has regained a Seppi. He is probably building a Faro pretty soon as well. So J Raccoon can rebuild, and he is working on that. He needs about 20 more Liquid Crystal to rebuild his Faro. But he has enough resource processors that he can actually feasibly do this. He has lost his Octopod, however. Electro has successfully defended against the... Or rather, J Raccoon has retreated... So Electro still successfully defended, he's just not destroyed all of Jericho's forces. He has caused him to rout, however, which is definitely good enough for giving Electro some breathing room, get him back on his feet, get our depot rebuilt, and get some RPs rebuilt as well. So J Raccoon, from his point of view, at the 10.50 mark, or 10.05 mark, the Electro's checking the present, I guess he wants, just wants to make sure if he can actually macro in the present, which unfortunately he cannot. He can, however, scout out and see that J Raccoon has been doing quite a lot of jumping around with his RPs around the map. Now, with Jericho's point of view, Electro is actually doing fine. So Electro has a chance to get out of this. And here's the Faro. Looks like they are going for a forward duo right there. Jericho has enough resources to actually build more Octopods. He could build another Octopod and use that to push forward. He could build... Actually, he could build a Reef right now and start going to Air Units, and that would just completely throw Electro off. Now, Electro, on the other hand... Okay, now he's going in the present. Now he's getting his foundations. Looks like he might be rebuilding a Depot further back, though. Assuming he does rebuild it, and he does have this RP, sorry, this Zion Pulsar. It is actually able to get rid of this duo. If he gets rid of this duo, that is going to be a really good position for him, although admittedly, he's further up in the present than would be advised. But still, if he gets rid of that duo with the Zion Pulsar here, I mean, he has it at this point in time. So if Electro gets rid of this duo, 
Oops, there we go. He can actually... Well, get to the Octopod first. And then the duo goes down. That'll be... Well, that'll be much harder for Jerry Coon to get out. And I think that will be it. That'll give Electro more than enough breathing room to get out of here. And yes, the Zion Pulsar comes in. The Seppi in Progen mode going down. And Jerry Coon would need to build another Seppi Faro duo in order to get out of here. And Jerry Coon jumping back to 1120 mark. He is able to stop the Zion Veer with the help of that Seppi. But even with that, the Faro not able to survive. We're looking at his point of view as well. And he is not stopping this destruction of the Faro. That is it. Jerry Coon throws in the towel. That is game one. Electro has one very clever turnaround on that defense from the Octopods there. Nice use of foundations. We'll move on to game two shortly. Stay tuned, everyone. Welcome back, Acron fans, to another exhibition... No, exhibition match, the tournament match! These aren't exhibition matches anymore, these are for real. It's game two of the Jericoon vs. Electro series. Game one was won very well by a comeback from Electro. Game two will be on Overgrown Citadel. We shall begin now. So, Jericoon starting out on the west side of the map, and Electro starting out in the east side of the map. Electro is going for Seas of the Time. So Electro, I think he might be the random player. I think we have our randomer. Well, Jericoon going for Grekum, of course. Jericoon, a dedicated Grekum player. And as we saw before, very clever with mind games and actually pretty aggressive. So it's good to know. Or at the very least, he knows how to play that style. Decently well, at least. Electro, on the other hand, knows how to defend and come back from a defense. I mean, that was... That was interesting, but he was playing Vecchio, and now he's playing CISO. I'm curious to see what he pulls off with this. Assuming he pulls off something, but given the last game, I watch with bated breath. Now, J-Raccoon is... I have this bad feeling that I completely misused that expression right then. Anyway. Looks like J-Raccoon is getting another Octo, probably for scouting purposes. There it goes. Now, by the way, I should point out, Tiny Map. This is a not as small as a virtual plaza, but this is a small map. So, bear that in mind. This is not a map where a heavily economic-focused build is easy to pull off. It's possible, certainly. Especially if you defend it well. But it's not... You can't do naked expansion. You can't really do a naked build-up of your base. You have to be kind of careful about that. And it looks like Electro is very quickly... Well, getting rid of this Octo. He got distracted by the Arcticus, which is a common thing to have happen. Now, Jericho, on the other hand, getting more... Octos. And actually, I should point out, Jericoon does not have enough Q-Plasma to build Octopods. It looks like he is focused a bit more on Faros early on. Interesting. Getting a couple early Faros for defense instead of Octopods. On a map like this, I'm not entirely surprised, though. Octopods do a great job against infantry. So I'm a little bit surprised. It's unusual, but it's definitely... I definitely see why he would go for it. It keeps him in Liquid Crystal. It doesn't force him to use any time on Q-Plasma. And on a map this small, like I said... Building up quickly is a good idea. You don't want to be focused too much on getting early tech. And Faros are a perfectly fine defensive unit. They work against air and against ground, and they're fairly tough. I mean, 135 health is not bad. They have fairly good attack power. They only cost 42 liquid crystal, so they're kind of expensive, but... Oh, sorry, 45 liquid crystal. Octos are 42. So they cost 45, but the thing is they don't have to get into melee range. They don't have to worry about, obviously, getting around objects in order to get into melee range. And they can hit air just fine. It's a bit more reliable, especially against CISO as a defensive option. And cheaper than Octopods. I can see why he's doing it. Now, on the other hand, Electro is still able to get rid of that fairly effectively with the second Marine. With the assistance of the second Marine, these Faros are still not doing a great job. Marines may not have all that much health with only 70 health each, but they do have a great deal of firepower. And the Faro is... The Faro defense is doing a pretty good job. The... Faro being pulled up from the triad in order to make this defense work, and it's successful! That's exactly what it needed to be done, though two importers and an armory from Electro are, is going to mean more and more infantry coming in. And both players are definitely very focused on the Tech 1 game, the very, very low-tier unit game. And this iteration looks like this Marine is not going to be able to... No, actually, he's getting distracted by the Octo in Progeneration mode. Electro losing that Marine, but... 
this iteration, we come in with the special ops, and actually the special ops is going to die. It's not going to matter too much. Now, will Electro target the Faro? He is targeting the Faro, and that's going to get rid of that Faro. Another Octo coming in as well, but sorry, not going to get rid of the Faro. What am I saying? That Faro is just fine. So, J Raccoon doing a very well played job of defending against these forces. Actually, very nicely using this Articus, making sure that it's a little bit difficult to have both Faros in range. They have to move a bit further. The Faros have an easier time dealing with that and can kind of hide behind the Articus. It's interesting. I'm not sure exactly how effective it is. But it does mean that there's a bit more of an obstacle that... Because the thing is, infantry don't have huge range. I mean, the attack range of... I'm just going to electric point of view for this. The attack range of Marines is... Pr actually, oh, never mind. It's actually fairly large. Never, I forgot. It got buffed. They got pretty heavily buffed in more, one of the more recent badges. However... They're still considerably lower range than Faro's are, and it looks like J. Raccoon managed to cleverly position his units well enough that he is able to defend effectively, but Electro continued to build more infantry. He hasn't changed up that part of his strategy too much. More Marines coming in, and probably Special Ops as well, but definitely Marines. And Electro is building up another importer, so he is definitely focused on the infantry game. These Faro's are getting out of position somewhat. They're still able to get rid of one of the Marines effectively, but losing one of the number in the process and having to retreat, Electro pushing it, pulling his Marines back to make sure that... What in the world is going on? Getting rid of the... Why did he blow up his own Marine? Okay, Electro was a mistake. Okay, that was a mistake. Apparently, according to the chat log, that was a complete mistake on Electro's part. He did not mean to... <laughs> I guess, do a field execution on his own Marine. I mean... That Marine wasn't doing anything insubordinate or treasonous. There was no reason to throw it in front of the firing line there. I don't think I've ever heard of a firing line using bazookas. I suppose that actually would be more merciful than muskets. Hmm. Granted, I don't think they use firing lines too much nowadays. I'm not sure offhand how military justice works nowadays. But hey, a firing line with rocket launchers at least makes a good story. If nothing else. Special Ops are coming in for Electro, and that is... I mean, seriously, that Marine didn't even get a trial first. It wasn't even court-martialed. It was just... She was just fragged by its... by its comrades. I mean, really, if anything, these guys deserve to be court-martialed for friendly fire. But I guess that happens afterwards. You don't need to court-martial within a mission, as far as I understand. But yeah, these three Marines... Their heads are on the line. I mean, they're... They're gonna get some military discipline, I'm sure. That was just... That was a bad action. But we'll see what comes of it, because Electro is going to have to face down quite a few Faros, about half a dozen Faros here, and he has quite a lot of attack power with his infantry units. Now, of course, that's the big thing he has is attack power. Not a lot of health, but a lot of attack power, and that attack power is going to be a very useful thing to have. Now, it looks like J. Raccoon getting fairly confident. He's starting to expand a bit, starting to get a few more RPs. Not a whole lot more. Both players are still going for a very aggressive game. And Electro, on the other hand, just pumping out... Wow, actually, he could be building... He could be building RPs right now. He has a lot of liquid crystal. He could be building some more RPs and developing up tech a bit. He's... Or just build more importers and armories and so forth. And get a massive amount of... Oh, well, there's another armory. Okay, well, that's where he's going. So he's definitely making use of the resources. He just has a lot of liquid crystal in the bank because infantry basically only costs reserves. They cost... Marines cost 8. Special Ops cost 14. They effectively only cost reserves. I mean, if he builds two or three more armories, that'll probably be... He could be pumping in a lot of infantry now, and he is moving forward. This is going to be the decisive battle, probably, while J. Raccoon is moving into defensive position, or at least patrolling around defensive position. Yep, he is... He d appears to have a good patrol route going. I think, anyway. Is he patrolling, or is he just... No, it looks like that is a patrol route. Okay, it's hard to tell because it doesn't say what kind of order it is. They're just going back and forth. So I assume that is patrol route on the commander. And that, that is, Yeah, that is exactly what's happening. You see the order going back and forth. So his forces are patrolling nicely just in case Electro comes in the north or south. And ground units coming in. The tech that Electro wants to have, that will buff up all of his marines, boosting their damage output by about two damage per... or two and a half damage per second. So they're going from 11 damage per second to about 13.5 or so. That will likely be the thing that wins him the game. And it looks like he is going for the attack. We don't see the attack that hard. Now, J. Raccoon does see the attack happening. And that 
even with the Reef here, the amount of damage being dealt in this short amount of time, even the Arcticus tanking all that damage is not helping. J Raccoon is losing everything in the level past edge. The Reef going down. These Marines are showing the power of infantry, and that is game. Electro has won his tournament series. Wow, that was quick. That was really quick. So, yeah, that is second tournament series. So, Electro will be fighting against Monkuki while J Raccoon fights whoever loses between Cybernetic Pony, Shalka, and Sheridan. Or whoever wins Shalka and Sheridan and then loses to Cybernetic Pony. Or between Cybernetic Pony and the winner of that. We'll be fighting against J Raccoon. And that will be it for me tonight. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I should have another one of these tomorrow for the Shalka, Sheridan, and, Shred and the series between myself and Aragant. That'll be tomorrow evening, same time. For now, thank you for watching, and have a good night, everybody.